Morning everyone. When you've got a warehouse that sort of arrangement you see over here where you've got a truss or some trusses that have been maybe arrayed and then we've got some purlins that we created and we've arrayed those purlins then let's think about how this interacts. There's the analytical model and we can see how this node is attached to the rafter. We learned how to do that in an earlier blog. And then when it crosses the rest of the rafters, you can see it's not actually pinned in place there. So from a structural point of view, we'd like them to be pinned in place. Or sometimes we might want it if we wanted to play a role in the in the structural analytical model. So what would be a good way to do this? Well, in the first instance, Having an array for the purlins and not ungrouping them is a great idea. Not only can you change the number within the array to change the spacing as you can see there and then it's very easy to meet your minimum distance requirements but you can also attach them to the nodes. Now what must you do? Must you draw each individual purlin on its own? And the answer to that is no. Sorry, here's an earlier array. I just need to get rid of this quickly. There we go. So let's try and see if we can be clever about this. What happens with groups or what happens with arrays? When we create a linear array, it gives us the option to group and associate an item. So if we take anything over there and we say array and then we can group and associate. And what that does is it creates the element that is arrayed as a group. You can see it's a model group. You can always rename it. And we can edit and ungroup as usual. In addition to that when clicking on one of the group members, it's also possible to change the number of items in the array. Alright. The next question is now, how do we modify these purlins all together? Let's have a look at, at that. So I'm going to set the, uh, I don't need to, but let's set the uh, work plan to say level, ground level. The other one is an inclined plane. And then let's have a look at what we can do over here. If I tab onto one of the members, I'll see that I've got hold of a lip channel. This is not the way to do it, by the way. And we can split that. Suppose we split it over here. That split the wrong element, right? Can we split the lip channel if we if we choose it? No. So, because it's in a group, it won't split. The answer lies in editing the group. And then splitting the element within the group. Sort of snaps onto the grid line and what we'll see now is if we tab onto the purlin there's one purlin here a short one and on the other side there's a nice long purlin so we split the purlin and because we did that within the group definition we'll see that it's propagated up to every purlin within that array within that group array and when we do that, let's have a look at the analytical model. There you can see how the purlins come in. And they've now attached. Let's tab to the nodes. They've been attached to the analytical model. If we tab onto the purlin, again we can see the properties. But let's rather edit the group. Let's have a look at this purlin over here. And now we can see how what is the start release and the end release constraints for that beam. It's fixed. 
so it might be bolted in place or welded in place. There's fixed pin bending moment and user defined. Those are the different options that you've got. The important thing to remember about this is not to try and tab onto the element to edit it. Rather use the group definition and then change whatever is needed to change within the group definition. While there's still a lot of manual work to be done, it now becomes easy or relatively easy because all we need to do is select one of these groups, edit the group and then go and split that purlin on each grid line. So keep this in mind, use it as a method if you need. When you do warehousing, use this method and then you should shorten the amount of time that you use to set up your analytical model. Where's this grid line? There it is. Okay, so it might take you some time to set up, but it's very much preferable to trying to do that using individual little pieces of lip channel. It takes a while to process all the changes throughout the group and the array, but infinitely faster than what we would be able to do if we did each one individually. And there is now an analytical model. Again, we can see where it crosses the at this point here, at that point there. That's not the purlin that we edited, but every purlin that crosses this truss is now pinned in place and can play a role in the structural model, which is exactly what you're after. I hope you guys enjoyed this demonstration. Hopefully it saves you some time. Strategize before you model and with a bit of practice and experience if you need your pertains to connect to your trusses to the analytical model you should find that relatively easy. If you need any help please contact us here at Micrographics and we'll be happy to assist you. Have a great week further and enjoy Revit!